Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. Thanks for checking in once again here on this wonderful Wednesday evening. Kind of rainy out here in Northern California right now. It is about 11.25 p.m. here, California time, on this Wednesday, November 15th, 2023. The latest earthquake, a 1.5 down here into the area of Southern California. That is the latest activity here. Uh, cover Iceland real quick. No major changes going on here far as the earthquake activity goes uh, over the last six hours. 129 earthquakes. Uh, it is dropping uh, in terms of the earthquake activity, but there's still magma rolling around below the surface there. Now, the latest informational statement here from the Icelandic Met Office shows that the situation is unchanged since yesterday. So we'll see what put out. See what they put out uh, tomorrow. But I have a feeling here we're uh, just kind of entering into a little quiet zone right now of seismic activity. And, of course, the probability of an eruption is still considered high. Uh, and, of course, in the event of an eruption, uh, most likely location is around the uh, magma dike. And as noted here, I've covered this quite a few times, there's an area of magma intrusion below this area of Iceland, uh, east of the Blue Lagoon and the power plant area, but to the northwest of the Grindavik area of Iceland. We'll continue to watch that area uh, for some uh, movement and uh, some volcanic activity. All right, uh, someone mentioned here, got an email about this earthquake uh, in the Illinois area, 3.6, near the standard Illinois area. Uh, now, I guess this was uh, felt over a broad area earlier uh, this morning. About, uh, well, what time was that that it came in? About 2 o'clock my time, so a little bit later over there across the eastern portion of the country. Or what would this be considered? The Midwest area? Uh, this earthquake here, let's go ahead and check this out a little bit more in detail. Because someone mentioned that this was very close here to an oil pumping operation. Uh, and I can already see, I think, here in some of this topography uh, of the map here. Um, this looks very old in terms of the satellite imagery. So I want to go over here real quick and enter in these locations into an actual Google Earth viewer. And uh, we'll see where this is located here real quick. Stand by for a second because if this is indeed near some fracking operations, then uh, hey, we'll check it out and see what's going on here. Here's the location of the earthquake. This is some type of farmhouse out here. Looks like maybe a, a trampoline or a swimming pool, some type of swimming pool out there. Not an oil pumping operation. Um, let's see here. I'm I'm really not seeing any oil pumping operations out here, so I'm not for sure what that individual was talking about. But uh, I don't know. Do you guys see any fracking operations out here? We we always like to point them out if they are indeed happening. But I'm not for sure how many uh, uh, pumping operations are up there around the Illinois region. These kind of look like some farmhouses out here. See some tractors and whatnot. So I, I don't know. Uh, maybe that person was wrong. Maybe they were right, but maybe I'm just not seeing it. But this is the earthquake activity that struck out there in Illinois earlier this morning. I'm not seeing any pumping operations at all. Uh, pumping operations are very visible across portions of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas area. I mean, I could zoom in anywhere in Texas area and see thousands and thousands of these uh, oil pumping operations and wastewater disposal facilities, fracking operations out here. And there's a beautiful pond out there, wastewater disposal facility. So these are easy to see. Even sometimes in the greenery of the land we can spot them out but I, I just didn't see it up there in the uh, illinois area so i had to cover that because uh when someone questions as to why um why it's not being mentioned that it's around a fracking operation well i kind of want to make sure that it is first but i'm not seeing that so uh, we'll go ahead and move on past that uh unless this says up here on the map this is this is some oil fields but uh, i'm definitely not seeing it all right, let's go ahead and look at the earthquake activity that is taking place out here right now. The latest activity on the globe, on the map, 4.2. Afghanistan, this is uh, eastern Afghanistan, very typical area, eastern region. See those deeper movement quakes, and this is no exception. A 239 kilometer deep, 4.2. 
Uh, seen a pretty good cluster of deep activity here across the Fiji Islands area. This is a cycle that goes on here across this region. We see deep earthquake activity being triggered here uh, into the trenches. That will ultimately apply pressure across this plate boundary and re-amplify the conditions that we've seen here over the past week. And we've seen quite a bit of earthquake activity out here across the Banda Sea. Uh, one area that we haven't seen, let's go ahead and go back to the last seven days, 4.5, is this area strictly across the Java Trench. Uh, this region can see some large damaging earthquakes. It's a major subduction zone. And, um, well, uh, we haven't seen that migration of pressure out here. So this with this re-amplification of deeper movement trigger, triggering further strain out here, we should watch this area across the Java Trench for some movement looking likely uh, not a whole lot going on across the area of japan we got one deep earthquake here into the izu islands earlier this evening we'll watch for some adjustment upstream here or potentially across this area of the plate boundary where some of the stress tends to build up at uh, across the alaska area very minimal movement at best uh, into the Cascades and the Pacific Northwest not a whole lot going on here a couple smaller microquakes across the volcanoes but overall, seismic activity somewhat minimal up there. Uh, here in Northern California, where I'm at, well, if we didn't see any earthquakes all day, that would be that that would tell me that something's wrong. Uh, there's always earthquake activity occurring, and uh, well, microquake activity looks to be the main player out here today. Aside from one 2.8 down in the Pinnacles area, this is the uh, San Andreas Fault down here, the creeping segment of that plate boundary that's a little weird so that's weird i have my laptop there in the background my laptop is the one i used to use here for the stream and uh before i got this new system and it just reset itself automatically and it's closed did you guys hear that in the background um, it's a, uh, I'm not going to say what kind of computer it is, but it's a laptop, gaming laptop, and uh, it's been closed pretty much all day. It's the system that I normally do my homework on and stuff like that, get ready for school, uh, the college that I'm going to, but it just reset itself being closed. That's really weird. Goodness, not for sure what's going on with that. That kind of scared me. That's why I paused for a second. Um, Texas area. Again, these oil fields out here getting hit pretty good. Um, and of course, fault systems out here across this area of the country. When this North American plate is under strain, obviously we can see some faults get active out here. And that includes areas up around Illinois. I don't think that there's any type of uh, uh, oil pumping operations up here. I just didn't see it. I'm not going to go into it because I, I don't see it. Um, if you're going to bring up a little... Um, um, incident or maybe something that you believe in um, please at least send some verifiable information because anyone could say hey uh, Cedar Point of Illinois there's a huge uh, uh, sinkhole out there well anyone can say anything right provide information on it that would be very helpful but I don't see the oil pumping operations out there so and I try to respond to everyone out there even negative uh, type posts like that that I received earlier Tiptonville, Tiptonville, Tennessee, a little 1.5 earlier this morning. Uh, minimal movement across the Caribbean plate, South America region. Did see some deeper activity here earlier this morning, or uh, this afternoon, I should say, with a 5.0, 126 uh, kilometers deep in this area. Um, let's see here. So a lot of deep movement taking place around the globe. You can see it. Uh, this is normally a sign that things are about ready to get active, very active here in terms of the plate movement. We got many areas here showing some deeper movements. The area here in the Tonga Trench, Fiji area is just one region, but also now to the west across the Indonesia Islands area, a lot of deeper activity. See these quakes, these rings that are raised off the globe, deeper quakes up into the Izu Trench. And now we got deeper activity in Afghanistan think things are uh, starting to pick up here pretty nicely um, and with the 
movement here that's taken place, this deeper activity. We'll keep an eye on Iceland. Uh, what does go on here across areas of the Pacific Plate and the Eurasia Plate? Obviously, it's a divergent boundary, kind of a rift zone up here where these volcanoes are taking place in the Iceland. Uh, what goes on with these plates here affect this plate boundary. So keep an eye on the Pacific Plates, the Pacific Plate, excuse me, and the Eurasia Plate area. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of uptick here across this region of the Mediterranean. Some uh, activity stirring up down here in the, uh, uh, it's a rift zone down there across this area of, uh, what's that called? Omen Trench or no, uh, Gulf of Aden down here near the Ishi uh, Shiba Ridge. It looks like a couple divergent boundaries. You can see that in the oceanic crust there. Pretty obvious. So, uh, you know, even though things are going uh, kind of quiet right now across the Iceland area, there is some, um, this graph here looks a little odd. Looks pretty spiky. Uh, now, I'm not for sure if there's a lot of earthquake activity stirring up out there right now or if this is just uh, some odd movement. But it looks like, to me anyway, um, this is the local time, 7 o'clock or so, 0700. No, that wouldn't be local, would it? Possibly. Yeah, I guess it would. Um, it looks as though things are stirring up here within the last couple hours pretty rapidly. That's why the graph here looks a little choppy. This is the Ison station, and uh, I, I see quite a few spikes in this area. So it looks as though maybe things are kicking back up here across the Iceland area. Uh, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it, and of course, we'll report back on it. Tomorrow morning, when uh, when we get around to it, Hawaii. It's another spot uh, that we're waiting on, right, for an eruption, but uh, not not so sure that we're going to see an eruption out here. Uh, about 14 earthquakes or so within the vicinity of the Kilauea volcano. Let's go ahead and check out the lo latest information here from the HVO. We didn't see this this morning because they put out a late update. The volcano there across the big island of Hawaii is not erupting. Um, the unrest associated with the intrusion began back in early October. Southwest of Kilauea's summit continues, although not quite as active as what we have seen here. Uh, the SO2, sulfur dioxide emission rates remain low and were measured uh, fairly neutral there across the area. There's currently no sign of an imminent eruption, but eruptive activity is possible in the coming weeks or months. Increased inflation and earthquake activity are expected to proceed in eruption. I've always chatted about that. Look for the tilt meter inflation. Look for elevated earthquake activity. We have both of those, but right now it hasn't broke through to the surface. And that's kind of why I'm leaning more towards... Uh, well, right now it looks like over the past day we've seen a pretty good decline here deflation event across the area of the, the uh, Kilauea summit region after a pretty lengthy period of uptick so we'll see if this goes down uh, as you can see here this is the past 30 days we've seen moments of inflation followed by a day and a half two days of deflation followed back up by a couple days of inflation and so on you can see it here on this map Looks like we're entering into a phase of deflation. Now, if this continues for longer than a couple days, then I would say that maybe uh, this may be in a pause of, of activity for an extended period. But we'll see what happens here. See if this picks back up. Um, definitely something to watch. <clears throat> All right. Space weather activity. See what's going on here. Looks like we're flatlining here across the area of the sea flare category. Not a whole lot popping here, it looks like. Uh, overall threat, 90% chance for a C flare. M flare, 15. X flare, around 1% chance. And, well, we have 3488 here across the area of the northeastern quadrant of the sun. And uh, that's about it. No complexity that I can see within that core. Uh, over here, yes, this little regional sunspot has grown pretty nicely. But it's, I think, tomorrow morning or so to be much closer to the western limb of the sun and pretty soon out of sight out of mind and uh goodness i think we're just entering into a very quiet phase here of solar activity solar maximum may have peaked and maybe that was it i wouldn't doubt it 
maybe this is a calm before the storm. Maybe the uh, sun is kind of playing games here. Maybe the, maybe it's going to break out into a huge um, event here soon. But I don't think so. The sun has behaved quite oddly here with solar maximum recently. Uh, no major auroras in the forecast, although it looks like we are seeing some slight activity across the um, polar regions there. Canada, Alaska area potentially getting in on some auroras. That is due to, uh, looks like a little bit of a KP index there. G the geomagnetic field showing uh, some activity stirring up there across the area of the polar regions. It looks like around... Uh, uh, nothing big, just some, some slight activity stirring up here. All right, uh, weather outlook here, numerical model. We are getting a little bit of rain out here in Northern California right now. Now, not a whole lot. Florida is looking pretty nice down there with all that rainfall stirring up. Uh, we do have this low pressure system off the West Coast that's going to bring in a little bit further rainfall towards the weekend here, as you can see. And it uh, looks like the Pacific Northwest is in for some good rainfall and snow up there in the mountains. After that, as we head into next week here, now we do have uh, some, look at this low pressure system here bringing in this massive cold front. See those blue lines there? That's a lot of cold air coming in from Canada providing a nice chilly day for Thanksgiving it looks like. Here in the West Coast we got high pressure, those orange lines, red lines. Uh, indicating some warmer temperatures out here and um, well we'll have to see how this holds out let me check out one of these assembles here real quick there's that low pressure uh, around Thanksgiving time period uh, after that um, it doesn't look like anything major coming in as far as any pattern setups but uh, Again, that's a ways out into December, but we got to start getting some rainfall out here in California. We have to. It's an El Nino pattern. We should be being hammered with uh, some storms by now. Check out the GeoNet servers here real quick. Forgot to check them out. Looks like a 2.6 uh, a couple hours or so ago. Uh, volcano drums out here across uh, any volcanoes. See what's going on here. No major activity across Taupo, Super Volcano, or the uh, rest of the volcanoes out there. They look pretty calm, at least uh, according to these graphs here. National Hurricane Center. Is there still hurricanes out there? Well, we do have, uh, well, we got that one system right now kind of spinning off the coast here in Florida. Uh, off the coast of Florida, providing some rainfall, but it uh, doesn't look like it's going to bump up at all maybe a 10 percent chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours 50 percent chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours here off the coast uh in the caribbean but uh that's about it i don't think we're gonna see any uh major development out here it is getting toward it uh, definitely towards the end of the season for sure right all right folks congratulations there to the member winners uh if you're uncertain if you won or not, go check out the member drawing that was held earlier today live. Um, and we'll, of course, we'll do it again next month. We picked out two winners this time, so um, congratulations to those members once again. One was just a new member today. They just joined the channel today. And the, I would say to that person right there, go play the lottery maybe. Because that's, uh, that's some pretty good luck there. Getting picked right off the bat. Just becoming a member on this channel. Pretty crazy. Alright. We're out of here folks. Have a good one. Keep an eye on the seismograph stations here across Iceland. That will give us a good indicator of any major uptick going on here. But uh, for now, it definitely looks like there's some smaller quake activity. But nothing big for now. Have a good night. Catch you guys back here tomorrow, Thursday. Take care.